Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Innalhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa na'unzu billahi min syururi anfusina Wa sayyiyati a'amalina Man yahdihillahu falamudillala Wa man yutlil falahadiyala Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharikala Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Dear brother and sister in Islam I'm your brother in Islam, Hussein Yi Al Khadim, Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, with the blessing and the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, we are able to survive until today. We hope that our life will be blessed by Allah, will be guided by Allah, and we hope that insha'Allah we become a beneficial Muslim. Like what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala want us to be kuntum khaira ummah you are the best ummah why? because ukhrijat lin nasi ta'amuruna bil ma'ruh wa tanhauna ani munkar wa tu'minuna billah because we have a responsibility to call mankind to do what is good and to forbid them from doing that is bad now today topic is about Islamic self-defense when we talk about Islamic self-defense we're not talking about normal self-defense because the first thing that we got to defend is our Iman that's number one our faith our religion now how do you defend Islam you defend Islam by having the right knowledge of Islam when you talk about knowledge in Islam you're talking about what Allah said in his book the Holy Quran, and what Prophet Muhammad said in his hadith. That is called pure knowledge. With this Quran and Sunnah, we will be able to defend Islam. But in the same time, when you talk about Islamic defense, other than just to defend Allah's religion and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, first thing you ask yourself, being human, we like to keep ourselves healthy, fit, the Prophet said, Al-Mu'min qawiyun khairun wa ahabbu ilallah min al-mu'minin da'if. A strong believer, physically, mentally, and spiritually, is always beloved by Allah more than just another believer who physically are not strong, economically are not strong, or spiritually they are not strong. Now the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to do is to make sure that we take all the halal and good food. Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. O mankind, eat what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have provided for us in this world that is halal and good food. Because we got to have a strong immune in our body. We must be strong inside. We must keep ourselves healthy. We must build a strong immune to defend from inside. Now, to be strong inside, you must make sure that you eat what is good for you. Now, today, everybody is very concerned about their health. Everybody spend thousands and thousands of dollars to make sure they eat the right food. Islam from before have informed us the importance to be selective in our food so that we are healthy inside. Now, when you have health, inshallah, we have wealth. And at the same time, you have a strong Iman, insha'Allah. By nature, the day that you were born, what do our parents do for us? They want to make sure that we have the right food, the right kind of drink, they will build yeah, our immune, have good body, we have good blood that flow inside our body, we develop good cells, good bones, so that we are healthy inside. It's a kind of defense from very young. As you grow, you got to increase your defense. What Islamic defense here is not just physical defense, but also spiritual. You must equip yourself with the right knowledge so that you cannot be easily be influenced by anybody, by any ideology. Because when you believe in Allah and you follow the law of Allah, Allah will save you from human ideology. Now, it's also very important 
that all Muslims should understand why Allah and the Prophet want us to remember yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing zikir and the way the Prophet have taught us. Every morning, the Prophet sallallahu taught his ummah how to defend themselves by reciting doa, the morning prayer, with ayatul kursi, and also with the three kul. Qul huwallahu ahad, until the end, qul a'unz bi rabbil falak, until the end, and qul a'unz bi rabbil nas. These three kul plus ayatul kursi is a very powerful ayah that can protect all of us from evil eyes. I'm sure all the brothers and sisters are exposed what is evil eye. Evil eye means a lot of people that is outside, not inside our house, that is outside from our house, who are not happy with what we have. They are not happy when we are happy. So it's very important to defend ourselves from all this evil eye. Now the Prophet Wasallam always remind us, if you always recite this few surah in the morning after Fajr and in the evening after Asar if possible, if you miss after Asar, do it after Maghrib and also before you go to bed, inshallah you build a defense for yourself from all the bad spirit or the evil spirit to penetrate through you and it also may harm you. And all of us are aware of this because you cannot escape from the disturbance of Satan. He has made a declaration with Allah that he is going to mislead us. He is going to tempt us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform us about his trick in the Quran. And also Allah inform us about the weakness of Satan. Now the Satan himself have declared in the Quran saying that he would try his best to mislead all of us as children of Adam except illa ibadi kahumul mukhlisin except the servant of Allah who are very sincere with Allah that is our number one defense if you want to make sure whatever you do will be accepted by Allah Allah is happy with you you are protected from a lot of fitna and you will never go through a lot of suffering. Whatever you do, you must be sincere. That is the most powerful weapon that Allah has given us to the extent that shaitan said, I cannot even win over or control people who have sincerity, who have ikhlas. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran remind us, وَمَا umiru." You are not being commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except to make sure that you are very sincere in following the deen of Allah. Whatever you do is an act of worship. You do it purely to please Allah, not because you want any worldly profits. You just do it for the sake of Allah. Your ibadah, doing righteous things, helping the poor, helping the needy. No more good thing you get involved in, inshallah, people will always love you and they will always pray for you. Now when people do that also, it's another defense for you again. Because you know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam did remind us, da'watul aqi li aqi fil la turat. Meaning, a prayer from a fellow Muslim brother or sister to another fellow brother and sister in Islam without they ask us to pray for him without they know that we are offering a prayer for them will not be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that kind of prayer comes from the heart because he is very sincere he remember you in his prayer he asks Allah to protect you he asks Allah to save you from all the fitan on this earth no, that is why the most powerful self-defense the Muslim have is you must make sure that whatever you do, whatever you say, is really for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lillahi ta'ala. Khalisan. Purely for Him. 
I just give you an example. If you are doing some good deed, helping some people, but you are not sincere. Now, if that person do not appreciate what you have done to him or to her, what will happen to you? You feel regret. You are not happy. Yeah? You are sad. It's because you are not sincere. We hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open our heart to help us to become more sincere in whatever we do in the future. Insha'Allah, we will see you again after the short break and I hope that you'll be with us, insha'Allah. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa aqli da'wana wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back to our program. Dear brother and sister in Islam, I'm your brother in Islam, Hussein Yi Al-Khadim from Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, before this, we have been talking about how important for us to be sincere because that is our number one uh, defense and also the first and also the most powerful defense in Islam. We talk about three types of defense. Spiritual defense is with Iman, the right Iman. Mental defense, we have the right knowledge. And the physical defense, of course, you must keep yourself fit. Now, after you are having all this defense with you, you can still develop a stronger defense by learning some kind of self-defense that is not contradicting with the Islamic Aqidah. Of course, there are some self-defense that contradict the Aqidah. Why the Prophet encourages his Ummah to swim, example, to keep your body strong? Why he wanted to ride horse, archery, all this is something to keep yourself fit because when you are healthy, inshallah, healthy body will also have healthy brain, healthy mind, inshallah. Now, this is very important. Allah do not like the Muslim to be naive, passive, you know. Anybody just push you aside, you fall. No, that shouldn't be. Because the Prophet said, Al-Mu'min manfa'atun. A true believer is beneficial. He is there always to help people to protect the weak, yeah? to protect the children, to protect the woman. Now, how can you protect them if you are not strong enough? In the Quran, in the early, uh, early ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that if the Muslim is just 1,000, they can fight against the enemy 10 times. One fight against 10. But at the end of the ayah, Allah said, one to two. Why at first Allah said that a Muslim fighter can face his enemy one to ten, and at the end, one to two? Because Allah knows our nature, we are getting weaker and weaker. Why we're weaker? Because our heart now is inclined to dunya more. We are not talking about Allah's reward anymore. We want the reward in this world. And we love this world so much that we are not prepared to depart from it. It makes us very weak. But still, Allah said, one Muslim is able to face two enemies. That means if you cannot face two enemies, you are considered very, very, very weak. That means you have no self-defense for yourself anymore. Fellow brother and sister in Islam, always remember even how strong we are how rich we are, how powerful we are. At the end of the day, we got to make tawakkal to Allah. That's why Allah remind us and the Prophet taught us, don't forget to say, حَسْبِ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ وَكِيلٌ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ That, no, we have to, after trying our level best, you have to defend ourselves, physically, mentally, we must come back to Allah and ask Him to protect us. Because at the end of the day, whatever you have, the power is in the hand of Allah. Allah has reminded us that He is the most powerful and He is the King of all kings. Everything belongs to Him. He do what He please. So whatever you have, don't be overconfident that you don't need Allah's help anymore. You still got to come back to Him. 
Example, when you want to travel far and then you want to travel with the car, you must make sure that you check your vehicle, your engine, the brake, the alignment of the tire, everything you want to make sure is fit. Inshallah, we hope that when everything is being checked, then you must make tawakkal. At least you say to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, "Sakar lana haza wa ma kunna lahu mukrinin wa inna ila Rabbina laman qalibun." This is the prayer that the Prophet remind us. Even we have, we are a good driver, we have the license, and we have all the good car with us. But at the end of the day, you must remember the one that will give you security. The one that can protect you from all danger that you are not able to see now. You are not going to hit anybody, but people may come and hit you. This is what happens sometimes. You see in the newspaper sometimes you are shocked. People are just resting in a home. The lorry can just come into the house. How can you defend yourself? Only with Allah's will. If Allah help you, you don't have to worry. Nobody can destroy you. But if Allah is not there for you, even you have all the defense with you, you have your bodyguard, you have all the alarm at home, all the security men will run. But if Allah do not protect you, anybody can harm you. This kind of belief is very important because a lot of Muslims they overconfident. They thought that I have the money, I can buy all the security system, I can employ bodyguard to protect me. As for self-defense, but at the end of the day, no. At the end of the day, we still got to go back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How about Muslim involved in this kind of normal, physical self-defense? Example, learning Chinese kung fu, Shaolin. Why not? Anything that has nothing to do with their creed, their kida, is just movement, exercise. You're welcome. How about Taekwondo, Karate? From Japan, from Korea, why not? How about Shaolin? How about all this Tai Chi? Why not? No, that's nothing wrong. I get involved in all this kind of exercise. Yeah, I do my Shaolin exercise. I do my Qi Gong. I do my Tai Chi. I'm involved in any area that I think that can benefit me. Because that's what the Muslim is. They are so wise that anything that benefit them, they will grab it. But anything that do not benefit them, they always stay away from it. That's why the Prophet said to his ummah, "Min husni al-Islam al-mar'u tarquhu ma la yani." A good Muslim, and the beauty of Islam is that the Muslim must always stay away from things that do not bring benefit to them and do not concern them. They won't talk about things that have nothing to do with them. They do not want to get involved in things that is not healthy. Then you will. Be weak, yeah. So, insha Allah, fellow brother and sister in Islam, please remember when you're talking about the Islamic defense. Not only we are talking about the physical defense, we also talk about mental defense and spiritual. Spiritual, don't forget to always call upon Allah, recite all the du'a that the Prophet highly recommended us to recite, because He knows, and Allah who created us know that a lot of people who is outside us. I'm not happy. What you have, something, the feeling of jealousy, the feeling of enviness, is always there. Even among siblings, sometimes we dislike each other just because of jealousy and enviness. So to protect us from all this evil spirit and whatever people have bad feeling, have bad thoughts to us, we always ask Allah to protect us by reciting the ayatul kursi. Don't forget, you know ayatul kursi and also the three kul. Kulhu Allah, you say. Kulhu Allah said what? Kulhu Allah had said. Allah is what? Allah is what? Allah is the place that all cheer depend on. All of us depend on Allah. Even the jinn depend on Allah. Even the angel depend on Allah. So everybody come back to Allah Subhanahu. Ask Him to protect us. And when He protect you, no better can destroy the fortress of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's why you see. Remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remind us the importance of fasting in the month of Ramadan. And what do Allah said about Ramadan? I just want to relate one of the hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah has said, "As-Sawmu 
dunna. Meaning fasting is like a shield, a fortress that can protect you from doing things that is haram. Now, if you want to make sure that you are always safe, stay away from all the haram things. Stay away from all the haram deeds, haram words, haram food and drink. Anything that's haram, you stay away. Then, inshallah, you see, you have peace wherever you go. Like I always remind myself and my fellow student, I said, we do not want people to harm us. How can you protect yourself? What is the best defense? Number one, you always be good to others. Allah said, be kind to people like how Allah is so kind to you. Even they have been very unjust to you, if you can forgive them, forgive them. Don't keep it to your heart. Then you have no peace. And in the same time, yeah, the Prophet said, La darar wa la dira. You must remember, a good Muslim is a person who do not harm himself, neither he bring harm to others. Now, if you don't harm other people, there's nothing for you to worry. People won't harm you, inshallah. If you don't like to talk bad about people, inshallah, people also will leave you alone. But if you are too busybody, like to get involved in anything, then you may have a lot of problems. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the best Muslim who act upon what Allah and the Prophet want us to do. And always show kindness, especially to your parents, number one. Because you've got to defend your household. You cannot just be so kind to other people, you forget about your household. Yeah. Everything starts within you, yourself, and also within the family. Then you go outside. So I believe that if everybody will follow what Allah wants you to do, you save yourself from a lot of problems. And if you act accordingly to the way of the Prophet, because he is the best example, and inshallah, you find peace wherever you go. The last thing that I have to share with you, remember what the Prophet said one day, Usikum bitis'in. The Prophet said, Awsani Rabbi, yeah, bitis'a, you see, Allah have remind me of nine important things. One of it is al ikhlas fi sirri wal alaniya. Again, we are back to the first defense. You must be sincere in whatever you do, whether you do it openly or you do it secretly. Please, brother and sister, be sincere to Allah in whatever you say and whatever you do. And may Allah accept all our deeds and may Allah have a strong defense. Yeah, to us to defend our iman, our body, and our mind. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa aqri da'wana. An alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.